AMD has new APUs that are going to be hitting the market soon, and what makes these CPUs interesting in particular is the performance of their integrated graphics. In an era where entry-level GPUs are steadily going up in price, people who are still at the low end are left with few options or just terrible options, so could these CPUs be a viable replacement? On top of that, we've got some interesting architecture rumors surrounding Intel's upcoming Arrow Lake CPUs that may or may not make some of you unhappy. All of that and more to be discussed in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. The past few weeks in the PC hardware industry have been somewhat busy. There's been a lot of hardware that's come out, but to say it's been exciting would be an overstatement. I've been actually busy myself trying to migrate my personal rig, as I've upgraded to an i9-14900K on a Z790 ROG Apex and with 48GB of memory. I'm still messing around with the system, but it's been pretty fun. I've been intrigued and entertained by memory tuning on this Apex motherboard, simply because of how easily it was able to handle an 8000 megahertz overclock on my RAM. For those of you out there that don't want to F around with DDR5 and find out, honestly, get the Apex. I know it's a huge premium, but I thought it was well worth it because trying to OC memory, DDR5 memory that is, on a 4 DIMM board is some next level torture, whereas on the Apex, it is easy mode. Not sure if I'll make a settings overview video, but you guys can let me know if you are interested in seeing that. And if you're interested in doing the upgrade yourself with similar parts, then check the links in the description some affiliate links are down there to help support the channel. Circling back to the topic on hand, we've been discussing a lot of these new GPUs coming out, but today I wanted to shift our focus over to CPUs, but still somewhat GPU related as they often go hand in hand. At CES, AMD announced some new Ryzen 8000 APUs. Now what makes this release interesting is that in the past when AMD released APUs, they had a more substantial appeal because typically their desktop CPUs wouldn't have integrated graphics, but with the Ryzen 7000 series, they did have onboard graphics and all of them, though they were using last-gen RDNA 2-based graphics, and they only had like two compute units, so their re only real use was functioning as a display out. With the Ryzen 7 8700G and the Ryzen 5 8600G, you'll find that they have more beefed up specs when it comes to onboard graphics. I'll be mainly focusing on the 8700G as it has more compute units and has been the main focus of the APU discussion. The 8700G is based on Zen 4, so the same as the 7700X and 7800X 3D. It's got 8 cores and 16 threads. However, it doesn't clock nearly as high as the 7700X, nor does it come with a boatload of cache like the X3D parts. In fact, you'll find that it has half the amount of L3 cache as the 7700X at 16 megabytes, and that will definitely make an impact to its performance when it comes to using it with a discrete GPU solution. Along with that, it does have a lower TDP at 65 watts. Now, with APUs, this is to be expected because they're monolithic CPUs, and a good chunk of the die space is taken by the onboard graph. Graphics. It's not going to have the same sort of specs as its non-APU counterparts, you're going to be dealing with trade-offs and compromises. The CPU will launch on January 31st and will retail for $330, but the question is, say you're in the market for building a low-end or budget gaming rig, is this CPU or even the 8600G worth considering? If you've been following my channel for a while now, you might have remembered a few years back I made a video showcasing a gaming build that I did which didn't have a GPU. This was a build starring the Ryzen 5 5600G and it was during the time where GPUs were at an astronomical price because of the mining boom and shortages, even entry level ones, and they were also a total pain to find. But at that time, I was quite impressed by the performance of the APU. You could play some AAA games with low to medium settings and get a playable frame rate. I said that, hey, if you want to find some kind of avenue to get into PC gaming at that worst time, then this was a viable option if you really couldn't find a GPU. However, now things are different, and I was looking at various benchmarks on YouTube and online of the 8700G, and I'm not so sure I see much reason as to why a CPU like this needs to exist, maybe aside from existing to fulfill some contractual obligations or for OEMs to make some builds with. Actually, if someone wants to make a very small footprint NUC like system without a GPU, then this is a viable solution, but aside from that, for the DIY market, there are much better options out there. When it comes to productivity, performance is okay. It's an 8 core 16 thread CPU, a Zen 4 core based CPU, so it's got some grunt, but in terms of cost per dollar, when it comes to these applications, even an i5-14500 would offer you better per productivity performance, and it's $100 cheaper, so it's mediocre and won't be winning any awards in this department. 
that's fine because the main strength and selling point of the CPU is the onboard graphics. As the 8700G comes equipped with 12 RDNA3 compute units with a boost clock of up to 2900 MHz, we've seen this configuration before in all the mini PCs that are getting attention these days, but what makes it interesting here is that the onboard graphics get the chance to stretch their legs due to having a higher power envelope and also faster DDR5 memory on the desktop. And looking at some of the benchmarks, the performance from an iGPU standpoint is impressive. It's the best we've seen from integrated graphics, and you can play many titles, even AAA ones, at 60 FPS plus. Now granted, you are going to be dealing with low to medium settings, and you probably will have to utilize upscaling like FSR. But let's say you got a CPU like this one, or the 8600G, and really this is your only option available, you just can't find a GPU for whatever reason, then it's not like you're completely shit out of luck, you'll still be able to game it and get a playable experience. However, what kills the appeal of this CPU is that for the price, if you're in the market for a low entry level gaming build, you're better off buying an i3-12100F, which goes for around $100 US, and finding an RX 6600, which goes for less than $200 regularly, and I've even seen open box or the Newegg refurbished ones go for around $160 to $170. So if you don't like dealing with eBay, then this is your next best option. But for $300 or less, you can buy the 12100F and an RX 6600 and attain much better performance while coming cheaper than the 8700G. Therefore, you have a better alternative if you're an entry-level PC gamer. Oh, and also if you want to bring in productivity into this, a lot of programs can use GPU hardware acceleration. So if you don't have a CPU with a lot of cores, you can use stuff like NVENC or AMD's VCE to help out and cut rendering times. Along with that, if your argument is that, well, down the road, the 8700G will serve me better once I have money for a higher end GPU. Well, Hardware Unboxed showed it was bottlenecking a high end GPU like the 7900 XTX. So when you get to that point, I think most of the owners of the 12100F will probably get a better experience by upgrading to something like the 14600K or a 13700K on clearance. So all in all, the 8700G, it seems to be a very niche product. There aren't many reasons why someone would buy this over a cheaper CPU and GPU discrete solution. So I'm not sure, hopefully get some price cuts in the future, but I don't know, let me know in the comments what you guys think, what kind of use cases you think this CPU is very much viable for, or what price it should have been. Now shifting our focus away from AMD, I wanted to briefly touch base on this article I saw a while ago, talking about Intel's next generation CPU platform, Aerolake, and how Intel is going to be dropping hyper-threading. Hyper-threading has been around for years, and has definitely helped boost the multi-core performance of CPUs when it was first introduced, especially as the years went on, it did help lower core count CPUs. However, now that Intel is using a hybrid architecture where a whole CPU package can contain up to 16 e-cores, yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to continue with hyper-threading anymore. What most people don't realize is that Arrow Lake is supposed to be a stepping stone for Intel. When it comes out, I think you're going to see many people disappointed in its performance because it won't be drastically faster than the top-end chips we have today, like the 14900K and 14700K, because while the actual P cores will be faster, the lack of hyper threading is going to hurt them on their overall multi core. But I think the advantages this will bring are better efficiency, better latency, and better security if that stuff matters to you. But what I do know, what most of you care about, is gaming performance, and the lack of hyper threading will allow them to definitely push gaming performance further. And these days, even up till now, games aren't taking advantage of hyper threading. I tested 40 games not too long ago with hyper threading disabled on my 13. 900K, while keeping the E-Core still enabled and saw many games did perform better, though in most instances it wasn't anything drastic. But without hyper-threading, this will then give them more headroom to push the P-Cores further if they want, or it can allow them to push for better efficiency, which is also something that, you know, is needed from Intel. Depending on how much pressure they're feeling from the competition, we'll see what they have to do there. But for Aero Lake's release in the market, it will certainly be intriguing because they'll be dealing with Zen 5, and when when it comes to Zen 5, the rumors are all over the place and that is a topic for another video. As for now, that will do it for this one you guys, we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.